Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Welcome to your Yoga Solutions Live on this quite chilly, what date is it? Uh, yeah, chilly, chilly Tuesday, the 14th of January, 2020. <laughs> I'm still getting used to that. Um, I'm Mark Jack Viva, and uh, yes, I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. So, yes, what are we doing today? Um, I had a couple of questions, which is nice, uh, and I had them in time for me to be able to register them before I started. I, I do prefer getting questions beforehand. If you wait till I start, then I don't really get a chance to see the screen that often. So my questions are, or requests rather, um, from Dorothy. Oh, hi, Dorothy. Um, hope you're well. Uh, yes, the, you know, the uh, proprioceptive course is starting this Thursday, um, and you said you were wanting to, to join, um, so let, let me know if, there's, if you need some help with that. Um, yes, from Dorothy, she says, um, a nice relaxation technique for a busy mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, that'll be a worthwhile thing to have a look at. And Peter, how nice. How are you doing, my friend? Um, down in sunny or otherwise um, Isle of Wight. Uh, so, hi Mark, something for neck and shoulders, shoulder girdle. Too much pruning with arms and in the air makes me want to get into that space rather than leave it alone. Ah, uh, fair enough, yes. Yes, do, do um, get into the space, certainly, and I shall offer something, I think. A nice relaxation. Well, they they sort of go together in in many ways. Um, well, I I feel that my yoga, you know, doing something physical to relieve complications in the body is kind of what my mind needs to go quiet. Uh, that's what it feels like. Um, and I could take it into a broader sort of understanding of things in that um, my understanding of the body-mind relationship, in, and I'm talking about the thinking mind, the personality mind, as opposed to anything else that I might refer to. Um, the, the, the personality mind and the body are already the same. They're already one. They're all, uh, the body is um, reflecting perfectly what is going on in the body, and the body is reflecting perfectly the ideas that are being played out in the mind uh, through action. And um, our job in our yoga practice um, is really to uh, adjust that relationship um, if, if we're not happy with the current situation. So, um, if, for example, the mind is being busy, there will be a physical response to that. The busyness of the mind will be a busyness in the body. And quite likely, it's going to be in the relationship between the physical head and the rest of the body in a literal fashion. Chances are the neck and throat will be kind of restricted in some fashion. You know, if you're tense and thinking about stuff, you do stuff with your body in a way that creates tension. Um, it's as an expression of how you're feeling. You know, so um, what's difficult with the mind is that if we're using, uh, you know, the, the, this idea of using the mind to quieten the mind, um, you can't think about not thinking. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> Um, but what you can do is you can give your um, intelligence a useful direction of engagement that helps um, helps bring you to the uh, relationship that you're looking for that will help the mind quieten. And uh, it, you know, if if you could, you know, if the if the body is being busy because the mind is being busy, then if you can notice the busyness of the body, uh, perhaps the neck and throat or something, and uh, put yourself on task so as to cause the those muscles to not need to be busy. In other words, you support yourself from your earth, you find 
um, the outcome of that support as a release into space through breath and that sort of thing, breath and movement. And, um, and if you ch achieve that, the mind, the thinking mind will have been on task to create different conditions for itself. So it goes quiet. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm probably messing with your mind right now and making it too complicated for you. So what, what I think I'll do is I'll um, um, just get on with practice and give you something directly to do you know when there's um when there's busy muscles what do you do you you say say it's the neck and shoulders um you you, you try and go in there directly and cause those muscles to relax so we say we've got a busy mind um the mind will be busy in reaction to sensory perception probably and ideas of future, past, all that sort of thing. So what we can do is we can directly, through physical sensation, through physical action, we can directly access um, a sort of shutting down of those things. And there's a mudra, I can't remember the name of it. If anyone knows it, you can uh, let me know, save me having to research. But there's a mudra where you use your uh, fingers on your face and uh, to kind of uh, disable your your ability to react to sensation because you're busy shutting it off basically um, the the um, the thing I would like I'd like you to do it lying down so I would like you to do it in this orientation but don't go there yet because I want to show you what to do first so you're going to be doing it here and the fingers are going to be on the face and the sort of the hands will have to be strong but so that the arms can relax out from that Okay, but I'll show you what the precision of what it is that we're going to be doing when we're there. Okay, so um, first finger, index finger, on the space between the eyebrows. The next finger on the inside um, of the eye, uh, and the tear duct. The next finger on the tear duct, the, the, uh, the fourth finger uh, on the corner of the nose, either side of the, uh, the, cor the corner edge of the nose, either side of the nostrils. And the fifth finger, little finger, on the corners of the mouth. And your thumbs will be, uh, just so you can carry on hearing me, um, uh, officially, your thumbs would stick in your ears, but um, what you can do is you can, there's a little indentation just in front of the that little flap um, by the ear hole. Um, there's a little in, yeah, uh, indentation in the front of it you can use for purchase. And what, sh what you're going to do um, is sort of make each point of contact uh, through the fingers about equal. So, um, because of the shape of the face, there'd be some fingers digging in, digging in more than others. Um, and so you, you're trying to make it about even, and then the thumbs will have to push in quite firmly as a place of purchase, all right? And then when you've organized that um, lying down, um, then you'll be able to sort of use the holding of the hands to rest the arms wide from okay so i'll take you through that again lying down so organize yourself comfortably and please um please avoid the habitual placing of the pelvis in the in the you know especially if you're a um a, a pelvis tucker under a back flattener if you if you want if you've learned that then please let that go and allow each uh, heavy structure to kind of arrive in support equally and then index finger between uh, on the inside of the eyebrows uh, second finger in the corner of the tear ducts um, that third finger, the one before the little one, in the corner of the nose by the nostrils, and the little fingers in the corners of the mouth, 
thumbs uh, digging into the little gap just in front of the ears there so you can carry on hold, hearing me and then you want to make it pleasant there's a sort of widening feeling as the fingers try and drag outwards there's a widening feeling that you want to make about equal so for me I have to back off slightly in the eyes and work a bit more firmly with the little fingers and the first fingers to have equal purchase and then the thumbs became a become a place of leaning so you sort of lean through to your thumbs which essentially puts your the, the bones of the skull together which is another thing that will help relax the brain uh, if you find the dent in front of the ear too painful you can find another place for the uh, thumbs but uh, that place just in front of the ears uh, is quite a, an important one in terms of getting the bones of the skull to release so if you can sort of make all things about equal the thumbs will be slightly heavier than the fingers I suppose because they're taking some weight as if taking weight from the elbows through your bones and the other thing you need to make sure you're doing is not restricting or holding or reacting in, in the muscles around the skull so if there's any closing of the throat you know any attempt to flatten your neck like like any attempt to flatten your back that'll be interfering in the ability to release tension into the ground so there's this the ground behind the head there's this widening feeling across the face but um, it, it will depend on whether you're whether the wings can breathe and float where they are it's quite hard work this so um, and, and the intention to make it equal to make it equitable to make it pleasurable so you're basically widening the space uh, you'll be disabling the eyes and supporting the skull in one piece and uh, yes I'm needing to work quite firmly with the index finger to stop the fingers from slipping there and just having a breath or two in a way that expresses what I am doing and that's what I'd like you to do so the widening feeling and the embrace of the earth behind the head are both the arrival uh, are both actions that go with the arrival of the breath And then the sense of support through your thumbs and the widening action and the sense of support behind the head is a function of releasing the breath. And if you can follow that for two more breaths, so three complete cycles of the breath where your physical action of making your touch about equal to widen the face and widen into space the other side of you from the purchase of the head on the ground behind you. You can do that for three full cycles of the breath. Inhale and exhale. And this will be helping you relax the muscles of the face hopefully. And if that worked for you, you can let go and uh, come up and see how you feel. <clears throat> I don't know if the lights got better, but I seem to be brighter after that. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, so, so that, that, that's um, it's a mudra. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and there's talk about cutting yourself off from the uh, senses. I suppose but um, what you're actually doing is you're taking your thinking mind to the to the job of physically relaxing the reactions to sensation as in relax your face and uh, relaxing sense the the action of looking the action of listen of hearing you know when you're when you're trying to listen when you're trying to look these all add external tensions that keep the the body and mind busy whereas if you receive sight and if you receive sound sensation then the mind can remain quiet and that's kind of the basis of uh, my physical practice is that um, 
if I can be in a state of receiving support from my touch, if I can be in a state of receiving support from the space that I occupy through the breath and its release, then the mind can stay quietly centered in, in that uh, relationship to my environment. And, um, and as a result, I can see more clearly. A busy mind can't really see anything. It's busy darting around looking at this, that and the other. Do a puppy chasing its tail. And so uh, this is why my first instruction really is become quiet and present. Uh, I've got this little poem that um, helps guide people in their practice. So, and it starts, so from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from your touch. Make it even, make it kind, then ground and breathe. until you find a central place, a sacred place, the center of all touch and all space where you can just let go. Okay, so that's the basis of my practice. Now for the um, shoulders. So, um, yeah, Peter was saying uh, with pruning, the arms are out in the air and, you know, and the uh, muscles of the shoulders get tired. And uh, that's totally understandable. That's the... You know, when we're task orientated, uh, we get and we get strong at that task. Um, we're not always necessarily looking at the most efficient way of doing it. And so, you know, if, if for example, there's any kind of reaching out as opposed to a centering, um, then the muscles of the shoulders will be under strain in the process of pruning. So, um, so, you know, they're carrying the weight of the whatever it is you're using to prune and you're getting on with the task of doing the pruning. Um, whereas if you have a more centered relationship to the tool that you're using to prune, as in the spine is more in the central axis of your body and more connected to your hands uh, directly, then that won't create the same sort of... Um, problem for the shoulders in the first place but that being said uh, I'm not I don't um, unless we had a pruning uh, yoga class um, that's not that much used to in this moment because having done the pruning and and um, neck and shoulders uh, suffering as a result what we need to do is go to a place of relationship where the neck and shoulders don't have to suffer so um, my my inquiry uh, when, when I'm looking for a solution, I, I've got a solution and I could dive into it. But that's because I'm familiar with it. But the, the answer is in understanding the body as relationships rather than as parts. Um, yes, you can take hold of the muscles of the neck and you can massage them. And you can, I don't know, I'm not sure what you can do with the shoulders. Because the shoulders are a relationship between... Um, the way you engage with space and uh, support with your hands and you know carrying and that sort of thing and the body uh, so the the rib cage the and the rest of you basically through breathing and release so how how to get hold of shoulders well you you can't really um, what you need to do is have a better relationship and that relationship is more to is less to do with what you do with your shoulders and more to do with how the spine within the shoulders, between the shoulders, inside of the shoulders, relates to your touch, which is what I was saying a moment ago. So let's, uh, let's just get going. Let's find a position where we can explore this. And it's going to be this one again. Um, and once again, please, if you have any habitual way of laying yourself down, um, even if the habit is this way round, you know, with the back arching, I'd like you to let go of either one, the back arching or the back flattening, and in favour of just uh, being able to touch the ground. In, in fact, what we'll, what we'll do to start with, because we're interested in neck and shoulders, we're, we'll look for, um, by taking the pelvis a little bit off the ground, um, using the feet to sort of push up towards the head and shoulders, we can explore the relationship between the head, the wings and the body all in one go. So um, if you can 
sort of push up towards your head and shoulders and the spine between the shoulder blades gets to anchor um, sorry I'm nearly off screen now let's, let's go move down the camp the mat a bit yeah uh, if you if you sort of push up towards your head and shoulders with your feet a little try not to overly work with the pelvis because that confuses things a bit um, then you get to anchor the upper spine the thoracic spine the bump of the basalic down to the heart area by pushing up with the feet that anchors the thoracic spine down behind you away from the head so you get a little bit of space okay now if you as uh, if you uh, try and lengthen the neck in that way by pulling the throat closed you're just pulling on the tissue that is complaining that is being given the job of carrying the weight of the shoulders and other things whereas if you use your feet to push up towards your head and shoulders and your, your head will slide very slightly and the spine will stay where it is what that does is that moves the spine within the shoulder girdle um, it anchors it down but allows it to move through the shoulders if you let the shoulders come up with you okay if you let the shoulders come up with you once you've done that then I would like you to then get involved with the shoulders on the ground like you're using them for support so you know if you were to actually pull the shoulders in the ground to to lift yourself off the ground I don't want any effort in the legs please so it's all in the shoulders you know if you're to actually use your shoulders for support then what that gives you is a degree of separation between the 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 wings behind you and the ribs behind you because the shoulders are being used on the ground to send the ribs and the spine away from the ground and that's a useful thing to do provided that you're not reacting to it by closing the throat which uh, is kind of essentially you try to lift your head off the ground we need the head to be part of your support anyway that investigation should have freed up the upper spine a little and um, if you can keep yourself in one piece as in keep the sort of the togetherness and the top end in place as you lower the pelvis then you won't be lying lowering the pelvis as far away from you as possible instead you'll lower it to a place where you can actually put weight through it and as you release that bit of tension behind you the spine won't necessarily reach the ground but it will it, its curve will soften slightly and the result will be support traveling through the spine rather than the spine being pulled this way or that so no just with that i'd imagine that shoulders and neck should feel a bit better um there'd be more space in the throat if you haven't been closing your throat in reaction to effort there'd be more space essentially along the front of the spine all the way from the tail to the um to where the head touches the ground along the but along the front of the spine um that'll be longer despite the fact that you put the pelvis behind you closer in fact because of it um when you tilt the pelvis and the and the head to try and stretch the space behind you what you do is you close the space in front of you so you, you're left without space on the inside um, so it should in principle it should be feeling a bit better anyway but say that there's been some strain on the muscles around the shoulders because you've been working with the arm bones pulled out a bit and we can do something to redress that and the thing that we can do say I wanted to work with my right shoulder which is the one you know far away from the camera at the moment I would drape that forearm over my throat with the hand turning away and then sort of threading the fingers underneath my neck as a place for them to go and that might be a bit of a strain if you're doing it with that arm so it's my left arm is the one that supports that action and you can do it with your hand on the elbow and you, or you could do it with the other with the left arm sort of wrapped over it using its weight point being that you want to kind of find your way into that position with as least sort of tension in the chest as possible so you're not sort of closing your chest to do it 
So as, as a result of this sort of support, I can kind of rest the weight of the top arm uh, onto the arm underneath, through the elbow, so that it lands both on the hand underneath my neck, but also it invites the arm bone back in the socket. Of the, so I'll, I'll swap sides so you can see the shoulder side of things. So I'm threading the hand behind my neck. And the movement, when I do it from my chest, it pulls the shoulder away from the ground. And that's actually the, the if I do it with the arm, that's actually the same problem that you started with. Um, because you're sort of pulling the arm out of its socket with chest muscles, which uh, pulls on the spine. So the support in that, for the movement, so you don't have to do it locally, together with the support back into the uh, joint, so, the, so that the weight of the top arm hooking over the underneath arm supports back through the bones directly to where the joint is, almost beyond it, like you're trying to feed the arm bone into the ground past the shoulder girdle. Um, that will help re relieve the complication of um, the sort of outwards reaching effort that you had engaged with. It'll be challenging because the rotator cuff muscles are, are sensitive things and when, when you uh, pull on them they get very very tense to try and protect you so putting them back together they'll it'll probably be a bit sensitive in there but if you can relax knowing that basically you're putting yourself together so there's less reason for tension if you can understand that then the mind can remain quiet with the process and you can get into uh, the sort of not only the support for the back through the arm bone but also the sense of embracing the earth with the head even uh, or the, the head and the other end of the body the pelvis the feet just in getting involved with your touch so that the spine between the shoulders gets a chance to um, soften away from the ground which will happen when you release the breath if you're involving yourself with your embrace of the earth. So because there's more than one point of contact, the, uh, it's hard to talk and do this at the same time because it's um, the mind becomes still. If you can be with that end of the body, the base end, the foot and spine end, uh, the foot and sacrum end, and the head end, if you can be with those things equally, quiet and present, listening from your touch. If you can be with those things equally as you ground and breathe, as you release the breath, with the same grounding, the same engagement, then the outcome will be something central, and it will be the spine between the shoulder blades starting to migrate away from the ground very slightly as you continue to rest shoulder back towards the ground or the arm bone through the shoulder back towards the ground and it's the change on the inside of the arrangement so it's the change of the ribs on the inside of the shoulder girdle that actually relieves the issue it's as the spine behind the heart sort of um, starts to migrate through the body a little towards the chest. The chest empties away from the elbow. So you come together, essentially. You come together at the heart, and the heart is fractionally closer to the elbow by the end of the out-breath. So it's the rib cage, the upper rib cage within that arrangement that um, is changing to give you a, a solution. And then you can try the other side. So, um, sort of passively thread fingers of uh, a hand behind your neck, across the throat, support it uh, with the other arm, settling back. Get into embracing the earth through the arrival of the breath. So that, so that uh, the two ends of the body, the, the touch can be about even between the base half of the body and the top half as you breathe.
and that sets you up to for if you stay with that contact that embrace that relationship as you release the breath then something will change on the inside and in this particular case it will be the spine between the shoulder blades is what we're aiming for whilst you support the arm bone in its housing and towards the ground behind you so essentially the rhythms of breathing become the the source of the transformation and uh, yeah uh, I could have taken it further we uh, turn turning it into eagle pose but then uh, that would have taken a longer time we, we we run out um, but that was plenty you know that was um, the how to relax the arm bone in internal rotation in the shoulder um, the the thing I would have taken you to, which would have been more challenging, is how to relax the arm bone in external rotation. Uh, but that will be uh, another session, I expect. Um, so, I hope that was useful for you both, Dorothy and Peter, and anyone else that's watching. Um, yes. So this is the, the part where I let you know what I'm what I'm doing. Um, my my uh, weekends with Pete Blackaby, my uh, beginning of the year fundamental principle weekends, fantastic. Uh, always always uh, a pleasure to work with Pete. Um, he he introduces people to these fundamental principles that that we both work with on the Saturday and um, on the Sunday. I show them that there's other ways. Of um, there's different ways of looking at the same thing and applying the same thing. It depends on your individual sort of um, I don't know intentions behind what you're doing, and um, so people get a, a kind of a, a, a nicely rounded experience of, of applying of a principle based practice. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic weekends and uh, lovely people. Lots of um, interesting questions and insights and I had some wonderful feedback from everyone so um thank you for those of you that came and uh, that was that was that's been and gone so i'm afraid yeah, that we have to wait till next year for that to happen again um other than that uh, this thursday is the launch of my f full proprioceptive intelligence course it's pretty much full there's uh, i think there's one spot left or two spots possibly uh, if you're thinking of it, and if you do, if if you book for the course, you can still you can still book the intros by themselves, but they're recorded, and you can. Um, so if you're not sure how it, whether it's going to suit you or not, and you want to try it out, you can um, still book the intros and and watch them and go through them before Thursday. And but if you decide to go for the course um, and and book a live place or a recorded place, uh, the recorded places are kind of less limited um, you know, there's plenty of those and that would suit you if Thursday evening at 6 30 p.m. UK time doesn't work for you um, or you know if you're likely to be busy or if you prefer to just follow the content in your own time uh, either way if you book the course you get one-to-ones with me so I get to monitor your practice directly and, and help you help iron out any confusions or complications in your particular sort of set of circumstances and uh, yeah that, that begins this Thursday 6 30 p.m. and uh, yes I'm really looking forward to it it's uh, two intros have been rather good and um, had some good results for people already um, so feel free if you would like to uh, join if you can't book it's because it's full and if you can't if you can't book a live place then um, you can you will be able to book a place for the recordings because um, the my only time commitment for that is for the one-to-ones with you you see um, so there you go and the recorded version is cheaper as well. So, so that's this Thursday. Other than that, things I've got going on. I think I'm I'm coming out to, uh, well, not till February now. I'm coming out to uh, London Bridge to do some one to ones, and then some point in March I'm doing another in March, and uh, then some point in March I'm up in Twickenham for a workshop. Um, there's not a lot workshop wise going on at the moment until until March then it all kicks off the various things 
Uh, yes. So apart from that, uh, you can come and see me one to one if you like, or or, or do it, do it via Zoom. Um, it seems to be online seems to be the way to go these days. And um, yeah, I other than that, I I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Uh, so yes, until then, I am Mark Jack Reeve signing off. Lots of love to you. Bye now.